the 1070 20 portfolio construction. So the reason why I'm doing this video is because I came across quite a number of horror stories. And effectively, what I found is people would be either selling their cars or their homes or they're using their retirement funds, putting it all into either 100% into cryptos or into 100% uh, into a project. And majority of the times that I've found is that e either these type of projects end up being scams or they end up being completely wiped out. Um, I've heard horror stories of people taking their rent and then gambling it on, let's say, cryptos. And then they end up getting wiped out. And you just can't do that. I mean, you, you're asking for trouble. And particularly when it comes to investing, you, you've got to know the game and you've got to have a game plan, uh, particularly a very solid game plan in place in order uh, to thrive. But ultimately, I'm going to be sharing the portfolio construction that I actually use. And the sad thing is that we're not really taught this in school. Um, I wasn't taught this in school. Unless you're, you know, doing a college degree in economics because uh, they teach, you know, portfolio construction or portfolio management, risk management. Um, you're not going to know this. And, you know, this, this is things I had to find out. You know, my parents didn't even know this. Um, they still don't know this. So in one sense, I can't really blame people taking their retirement funds or selling their homes or their cars and then going to invest in a particular like crypto project. And then they end up getting wiped out. I mean, they, they end up hurting badly because at the end of the day, they just didn't know better. Okay, so let's just get into it. Uh, so basically what you want is, here's your 10%, that's 20%, and that's your 70% portfolio setup. And how that works is you've got 10% is actually in gold. Now gold, I don't really view it too much as an investment. It's just more uh, as a security, like a, a purchasing power security. Uh, that's really it. But I've even divided this in a 10, 70 and 20 type setup. So um, basically, I've got 70% allocated of my total 10% in gold now you can do this as physical gold uh, but I've got this parked in actual spot uh, gold uh, itself so on the spot price then I've got 20% actually invested um, with gold fields okay and then the other 10% would go into your junior miners okay so this is just really high risk so I got spots and then I've got 20% medium type risk, and then I've got high risk here, uh, and that's just for my junior miners. But I even ease into my junior miners where I'll take like 2% uh, from this 10% and then put it into my junior miners, and then I watch how they progress. And if they're reaching their milestones, then I'll ease another 2% in of that, and then so forth, and just gradually ease my way in the entire growth uh, going from an exploration type company, a junior miner type company into a full blown type of gold fields uh, type company. Okay, right, so the 70% is typically these are assets that I own that are paying me out. So this could be dividend stocks, your dividend paying stocks. This could actually be property uh, that you're renting out. So that's paying you uh, monthly. This could be anything from, let's say, a e-commerce uh, type setup, an e-commerce shop, or anything that's particularly like digital uh, in a sense where, you, let's say, you've got a book that's uh, floating on Amazon that you're selling, or perhaps that you make music and you're selling your songs, or, um, you know, you got a YouTube channel and you're making money from YouTube. Uh, you know, anything digital there would kind of belong into this actual group itself. All right, so this this is the 70%, as you can see, makes the bulk of your portfolio. And that's ultimately what you want is assets that are paying you a salary. Uh, you call it a passive income, whatever, but it's paying you. 
And that is very, very important. And why that has to make up the bulk of your actual uh, 70% of your portfolio. Okay, and then we've got the 20% uh, of your portfolio. And this is for speculative uh, type stocks. Okay, uh, that could also be cryptos uh, itself. So this this is we can kind of call it like gambling money uh, if if you want to put it that way right you want to have this feed into this you don't want that feed in this um you're going to land into trouble so ultimately whatever profits you're making from here you're feeding into this and this really the best way to view this type of um, slice of the pie is if you're taking home a salary just think of this as like your 13th month check it's this bonus money um, at the end of the day so and then you can obviously spread that money uh, throughout your entire portfolio construction year but ultimately it has to all be funded really from your 70 percent of your portfolio um, if you just want to get further growth and this 20 percent can also just make up like your day trading also swing trading uh, itself like i said it, kind of view it as a little bit of play money gambling money um, you're not afraid to actually lose that money and um, again this would also be stuff like silver um, oil uh, it could also be things like tesla uh, and so forth this highly speculative type assets uh, that you would look at investing into and obviously particularly crypto would fall quite well into that and then again let's say you're going into crypto you just take sort of like the same type of setup try and break things up in like a 10 70 or 20 type rule or 10 percent 10 percent 10 percent uh spread it out quite nicely um over these type of assets and then you know if if you've managed to get into like one of the cryptocurrencies that just turned out to be a scam um you're only losing let's say about two percent um, of this 20 percent it, it's a big difference i mean you're not going to cry now you know as opposed to having a hundred percent in a certain crypto uh type project or a, a certain silver type company that went you know uh rogue or whatever the case is um you know you're not going to cry uh and that, that's the whole point is keeping your emotional state fairly stable okay so the reason why i'm actually sharing all of this is that ultimately you know we we live in a day and age where you know if you're a single parent or you're on your own or whatever the case is or you know even if you're a family to a certain extent um you cannot rely just on one salary um you know it's not the 1950s anymore and you just cannot rely on one type of salary and this is where the 70 percent comes into play because ultimately you want this entire bulk uh, to eventually supplement your salary and then eventually take over. And then, you know, it's a way to get out of the rat race uh, for you. And, you know, you, you're managing your risk portfolio and your portfolio in its entirety in a very mature uh, manner. Okay, but ultimately, you know, there will be some sort of risks attached to it because you, you might have a, let's say, a hair salon, for, for example, you know, and you just had COVID now. So, and let's say that took quite a bit of your portfolio, yeah, let's say about 50%, you know you will hurt uh, there's no doubt about it but you know you're left with this other 20 percent to still hopefully try and pay your bills uh or whatever the case is because you you've effectively diversified into other regions uh that is you know bringing in additional incomes in for you all right so that's that's the whole thing is just really just trying to protect yourself in the current market or environment that we're in all right and i'm gonna show you further ways of how you can protect yourself or protect your portfolio all right now if you do have some property in here um and you know you've got renters coming in and so forth uh what you do want to do is apart from the insurance that you've kind of got on your property right now uh and this also goes for vehicles and so forth you also want to get a um an umbrella um insurance on top of that so it's just extra insurance just in case um you know you cannot the way i view things you just can't have too much insurance and uh it's just another way of just putting a ring fence really uh around your current assets that you might actually have particularly if you're in property 
get a lawyer and you know you get packages with lawyers uh, with some law firms that that you know you pay on a monthly basis whatever the case is but it does help to have uh, a lawyer in your corner whenever you need it and not worry too much of the expenses on that because you know you've got some sort of a a membership or card um, with some law firm so that's another ring fence that you're going to have to look at just protecting yourself because ultimately you know you want to have this all as your retirement uh, one day and you know pass this on to your kids and this generating wealth after wealth after wealth after wealth I mean the whole point here is generational wealth now I did touch on things like dividend stocks so you might be wondering what type of dividend stocks would actually pop in here well I particularly uh, have invested quite heavily with the likes of Microsoft uh, because they do pay uh, some dividends and I've also invested in Coca-Cola quite heavily. Uh, Again, they pay some dividends. So, and the reason why I'm mentioning these two is because I'm viewing companies in terms of dividends, uh, if they're still going to be around uh, for like another 100 years. I've also in BMW um, as well. So, um, BMW has been around, I think, for 100 years actually. And I don't see them going anywhere for another 100 years. And it's the same with like Microsoft and it's the same with like Coca-Cola. I just don't see these companies disappearing over 100 years. So um, whenever there's dips in terms of their stock price, I'm just snapping more and more of that and just adding it in here uh, as part of my uh, 70% portfolio. It's just, you know, it's a little bit of passive income coming my way uh, from my dividend paying stocks so I'm, I'm very into dividend paying stocks and it does make quite a good share of my portfolio right now you might be wondering as well okay this is all great but you know i, I work full time i've got debts coming out, out of my backside and i have no money to put away or anything like that now what i would recommend there is a fantastic book called um automated millionaire uh, and it's by a gentleman called david back and um, you need to really read that book. Uh, it will seriously change your life. And the fundamental really about this book is obviously automating uh, your debt. And how that works and how I've set that up actually is I have three uh, bank accounts. Got your salary just popping into the one bank account. Uh, call that your debit bank account. Okay, and then from there it gets dispersed to the other two bank accounts. Be your savings, and then the third one would actually be your investing. Okay, and that would be money that would be allocated fully to this. Obviously, the first one is for your debt. And then what happens is as soon as your salary comes in, you've got money immediately going into all three of these bank accounts. So one paying all of your debts automatically, the other one going straight into your savings accounts and the other one going into your vesting accounts, which you then automatically send and set up with the brokers that you've actually have in order to build up your portfolio. All right, now the reason why these are quite critical, particularly with your savings account here, Okay, now you might not be able to put, let's say, about 10% uh, away, you know, in order between these two, Um, but you've got to start somewhere. It might just be 0.5%, 1% or 2%, but it's something. It doesn't matter how little it is. Um, Every bit helps. All right, so that goes into there and then also into your investments accounts. Now, it's always helpful to have some sort of dry powder coming into this, and what I... I do and what I recommend uh, you do because it is serving quite a fundamental principle is the 10% of that that comes into you. I actually send that out to call it like a charity or um, yeah, call it tithing, whatever uh, you want to call it. Uh, so basically, I know tithing has some sort of like a, a religious connotation to it, but that's not the point. Uh, the point is that you effectively get in the mindset that money doesn't control you you are in control of money you can freely give money away and that's the entire principles because it's trying to keep you grounded it's got nothing to do with a religious connotation or anything like that and it can be any charity it could be cancer charities age charities orphanage it doesn't even have to be human per se it could even be animal shelters whatever the case is the point is that you are effectively 
get in the principle that you can also give money away. And that's highly vital in order to run this machine extremely effective because greed is a very, very primal um, emotional instinct. And if you cannot keep that under control, you're going to end up also messing this entire system up and you're going to end up being showing quite a lack of discipline. And this is where you're going to end up hurting yourself so badly because you're going to have an imbalance uh, between the 70 and you'll find you're pumping more and more money into this and simply because you're allowing greed uh, and money to control you and you don't want that. And another reason why to actually set your portfolio um, up like this is you've got to understand the season that you're currently in uh, in terms of the economic environment so we are currently experiencing quite a lot of turbulence in the world so currently we're experiencing a financial uh, debt crisis and we are also experiencing uh, post pandemic fatigue still this plague is coming about but we're also experiencing a uh, environment uh, crisis currently uh, in the world that's with like co2 uh, carbon emissions and so forth all right and these are great opportunities in the sense of where you should be looking uh, to make money because that's where money is currently being uh, invested into and this helps drive in terms of getting involved particularly uh, in terms of speculation uh, like green energy uranium hydrogen you know things like that would all fall part of that and it's crucial to understand the type of season uh, that we're in, uh, inflationary season or we're going into a deflationary season. And I actually want to share something with you quite interesting. Okay, so I'm going to put this actually in the link in the description. This is uh, on Macro Voices. And this was actually a philosophy uh, a methodology uh, that was crafted by quite a well-known hedge fund manager, which is Chris Cole. And uh, basically, you've got the hawk and you've got your serpent here. And uh, how this works is on the right side of the tail or the wing, um, we're currently here. So we're experiencing quite a lot of inflation, um, rising hard assets, uh, prices, uh, wipeout savings, um, higher rates and low growth, um, fiat defaults and helicopter money uh, coming into play. So this is as clear as day where we're currently in the season of things right now. And typically, you know, we, we want to get into real assets and trend following type assets. You want to get into gold, metals and also uh, crypto itself. So uh, these are the type of plays that you could look at um, knowing the type of season that you're in. Um, but things swing as a pendulum. And what's quite interesting, when things swing as a pendulum, uh, there's generally quite a world um, force uh, in the sense of uh, upheavals uh, taking place and you know things like that we we end up this is where the snake um, allegory comes into play where the snake is eating its own tail uh, in the sense of a death to a current secular uh, system and then giving birth to a new secular system a new world order basically and then we enter into a deflationary type environment, uh, falling asset prices, wipeout savings, uh, failing ra uh, falling rates and low growth, uh, debt defaults and negative rates and quantitative easing. Uh, and again, this would be global macro and active management. Um, but particularly, you want to start looking more into cash and bonds uh, in this type of setup that's pretty much what i mean by season you've really got to understand the season in order to adjust uh your portfolio because things do swing in pendulums uh, you know money just doesn't disappear it just goes from inflation and then it goes to deflation from deflation and back into inflation and between all of this you get world upheaval and wars and and things like that and new governments uprising and it's yeah that's the crazy world that we live in um money is a force it is an energy force and it's not destroyed that force isn't destroyed it just gets manifested 
uh, through people and then, you know, back to the other side of the pendulum. So, you know, uh, that's that's what you've got to learn and that's what you've got to watch out for in terms of trying to manage your portfolio. That's why, you know, you just can't go blindly into things at 100%. Um, into one asset class. I mean, you're just asking for trouble, and this is why um, you will get trouble. Okay, so that's the portfolio that I follow, um, which is a 1070 20 portfolio construction. I found it to be quite resilient, and um, I do like the fact that you know you got 70 percent uh, of assets that that's paying you and that you're building up, and um, ultimately ends up supplementing your salary at the end of the day. Okay, so I hope this uh, video was helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. Uh, I would love for you guys to put any of your horror stories that you've had, um, also how you've set up your portfolio. And uh, yeah, this is Chris Trade. Peace.